So for people who don't know me, my name is David Hudson. I'm the Chief Engineer of the Telecom Infra Project, or TIP as we call it. Um, I don't have any slides to present to you. I just want to set the context for this particular session by giving a little bit of an introduction as to what we do and what we believe is part of the, the larger ecosystem for Open RAN and how we're accelerating things into the marketplace. I think there's been some great points that have been made today from Yago in terms of the statements of where Vodafone are heading with their deployments. That's fantastic news. The, dis the last discussion about the maturity of products, it's clear, products are there now. We're ready now. It is a journey, but we're already on that journey. Um, so that's, that's a really good thing to note as well. One interesting thing that came out of the last discussion as well, I think, was around procurement. And that's something that we, as an, uh, as an association, are looking at trying to address as well, moving away from these 100-page RFIs and trying to centralize all that information and make it easier for vendors to showcase their information, but also easier for operators to then select the correct products that they're looking for. But one clear thing to note is that there's definitely an ecosystem that is growing around driving the acceleration of these types of technologies, open and disaggregated technologies, particularly open RAN into real commercial deployments. And this is a community of various different stakeholders you know, we're talking about, we've heard from operators, we've heard from vendors, system integrators, hyperscalers. There is a combined effort to work together to drive forward open RAN into the market. You can see it when you walk outside into all the different halls, open RAN is, is everywhere. And it's no longer, is it gonna work? Now we know it's already out there. And we at the Telecom Info Projects, we're a firm believer that in order to make this happen, we have to work together as a community um, and look at a community-based approach to ensure the success of Open RAN. And there's no doubt that this is going to require a change in the industry from where, where we've worked to before um, to where we want to be in the future. I think it was a slide from Radisys that had all the different companies, you know, the 20 different large-scale incumbent vendors from 20 years ago, and I was stood at the back going, yeah, I, I worked for that one, and I worked for that one, and I worked for that one. I'd like to grow that ecosystem again. Um, so how do we do this? Well, within our community-based approach, what we're really trying to do is understand the requirements from the operators first. What are the use cases and the deployment scenarios that they really are focusing on? That's really clear. I mean, we want to build all of our stuff on, on standards so that we have that level of baseline interoperability. That's clear and keen. That's not what TIP does. TIP is focusing on productization, test and validation, and driving things commercially into market at scale. So I think there was an example uh, of the Open RAN MOU group in Europe, the five large European operators, who got together and decided that these are our list of technical requirements. Um, and they've been made public, and they've been driven through our process within TIP to stimulate our releases that we're developing. But that's great, you know, if you have a wish list from a number of operators as to where they want to drive Open RAN, but we also need to bring along the vendor community as well um, in order to satisfy and get products developed and defined and be realistic and pragmatic about how we can deliver Open RAN in the community. So what we do is we, we enable those discussions with the vendors to understand what their roadmaps are, what their products support now, what they'll be in six months, 12 months, 18 months. Aggregate that together with the uh, operator information. And we just published last week uh, our release two roadmap definition, which shows which features are gonna be delivered in which particular uh, minor release. And, and there are two things that really come out of that. It really helps the vendors to understand what the priority features operators are really looking at deploying you know, at, at the first point in time. And it's also very important to set the expectations for the operators themselves, so that when they bring open round equipment into the lab, they know what they can test, um, and they know what to expect, and they know what should be working, and they can focus on that, and they'll know that, oh, I do really want this feature, but it's gonna come in six months, so that's okay, now I know. We have an industry roadmap of how to deliver open round. So we define those product requirements from that release. We define blueprint definitions, again, focusing on key deployment scenarios that the operators are driving forward. And that's what we're testing. 
So we're really driving and testing a commercial strategy for deploying Open RAM. Now, the key part of this is test and validation. The community-based approach doesn't just stop where we all get together and sit in a room and write a product requirements document. It really has to go a bit further all the way through the process. In a disaggregated world, we have a lot more ecosystem players and we need to continue working together, especially in test and validation. So within TIP, we have a number of community labs globally um, where we are focused on testing all of the technologies together as a community and accelerate that to market. And that is really the topic of what we want to discuss today. How does uh, lab environments accelerate the adoption of new technology and particularly Open RAN? So I think you've had enough of me and my monologue. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome the panelists. Um, so firstly, uh, Caroline Chan, the VP of Network and Edge. General Manager, Network Business Incubator Division of Intel Corporation. That's a, that's a rather lengthy title, Caroline. <laughs> you get paid more by a lengthy title. What do you want me to say? You can take any chair that you'd like. Okay. Um, then we have uh, Salim al Balushi, from uh, who is uh, the CTO of Do. Welcome, Salim. You can flip coins if you... Yeah, I'm trying to match up with the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we have uh, Katia Henke, who is the Senior Innovation Project Director of the I-14Y Lab from oh. Deutsche Telekom. Oh, now I'm in the middle. <laughs> so welcome all. Thank you for Maybe joining us. Maybe we can us. switch later on so that we play a musical chair here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Firstly, uh, Celine, I'd like to start with you. Um, you know, we've had a little bit of context setting before. One of the comments that people always talk about is Open RAN is that the speakers always come from Europe. It's always Vodafone or Telefonica that are advocating and promoting. Now, so I'd like to get your perspective on why Open RAN is important for the Middle East region and why it's important to do in particular, and what do you think are the benefits of it, and what are the what are the challenges as well? So as, a, as an operator in, the, in, in, my, in my region, as a CTO of, of the organization, of course, one of my mandate is create value to the shareholder. And for, for that, challenging the status quo is, is an important, actually, uh, factor on, uh, on driving value. So one of the areas that we are focusing to improve the capabilities from end-to-end -end perspective, it is fact today we have four operators or four vendors in the domain of RAN. It is a sort of uh, closed uh, proprietary environment. So we, we, we want to challenge that domain from total cost of ownership, from time to market perspective, from enabling innovation, especially with 5G capabilities and opening the interfaces at the edge of the infrastructure, uh, from edge perspective, enabling computing environment at the edge. So all these things we expect to, to, to pave the way for future and new innovative innovation and new capabilities. That uh, having new players, uh, more players in the market will definitely enable uh, more, uh, more features and more capabilities in that perspective. Uh, one challenge we face being a uh, single country operator, it's very challenging to, that such new technologies, how we can test, of course, we have to test capabilities. We have to prove that it, it, it is as good as or even better than whatever we have mm -hmm. and validate that the cost capabilities, the features, quality, time to market, all these assumptions, we have to valid validate them in our own lab. And the challenge we faced initially that it is very difficult to get partners to work in the, in the single country operator. So for that, we, we, we work with the, in collaboration with the operator in the GCC. We have today seven operators, thanks to the ecosystem as well, the partners being Intel and others who contributed, supported us in building the lab. The lab hosted in our uh, in, in do network. However, it is open for all the GCC operators to collaborate and foster innovation in that lab. We are testing use cases actually. We are working with the, writing white papers as well. The team are engaged in preparing the initial white, white paper to define the features and the capabilities we expect from the uh, players in this domain that uh, satisfy our needs. Okay, great. Um, and are there any main kind of deployment scenarios? Or you mentioned use cases. What, what is the prime focus that you're looking at at the moment? Would it be for outdoor macro or would it be for uh, indoor small cell or private networks? I mean, there's many different ways that people are looking at. Yeah, actually, uh, at this stage, we are uh, focusing on 5G specifically. 
5G use cases, uh, the open interfaces in 5G, uh, the, uh, in, uh, the interface between different layers in the RAN as well, the, having them open interfaces. Mm. So all these things, again, the, our, our main area of focus. The operating system that's being deployed in the infrastructure as well, the, the Ether uh, operating system in the, in, the, in the core of the open RAN. So all these things are being validated, tested, to, in order to understand better the technology and drive expected value. Okay, great. And, and you mentioned the, uh, the, the Gulf Countries Consortium as well. Um, so there's an MOU that's been established. Is, is that in a similar vein to what the, the European Open RAN MOU group has been established? I mean, what is the focus of, of this group? Um, I think you mentioned that there was a lab there as well. Um, what, what can we expect to see as, as the output coming from, from the, so this the group? main focus to enable more players in the domain. So we need to introduce more player in the, in the domain, uh, jointly understand and challenge the capabilities. So, so and, and make it easy even for the players to have one touch point, mm -hmm. one environment, so we can collaborate better and get better outcome of this whole engagement. Uh, th this, is, this is the main focus actually. So this is the, uh, mm. one of the first time actually where we collaborate as a region working together in order to drive value for, to, to, the, to the ecosystem at large. Okay, and how do you ensure then that we're not going to end up with uh, a Middle East version of Open RAN compared to a European version of Open RAN Actually, this is the, North American the, the, version? Today, the competitive advantage we have as a telecom is the interoperability and the standard. Having three GPP standard or whatever other standard body, which is international standard, we don't want to lose that capabilities. Mm -hmm. And this is the focus as well of the lab. So we have to collaborate with our, with other international, uh, sorry, standard body in order again to ensure that there is one standard and it is not broken standard. So each, each party or each region will have their own standard. We, we, this, is the, this is the reason, actually one of the reasons where we are lobbying against that having a, 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 a proprietary, again, we'll go through properly solution, uh, b regional solutions, which is not the right way to to pave, pave the way for innovation and and uh, and foster the capabilities required from cost, from quality, from time to market perspective, so security as well. So having property solution will not help anyone. Mm. So we are f uh, supporting to move forward with the standard, uh, and this is the, the one of the purpose actually. We, we lobbied as a seven operator in order to push for an, an uh, international standard that we all. Uh, support and drive value from that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, Caroline, um, but before before then, I think um, I just wanted to touch on the fact that there was a press release related to the the announcement from the GCC uh, today that highlights all the participants and also the creation of a lab environment in collaboration with Intel and TIP as well. So, uh, please. I think you hit the wire. Yes. I think hit the wire now. It's out, it's yeah. out now. Um, so Intel are obviously very involved in the, in the open round secret ecosystem as a whole. I mean, you're a, you're a board member of TIP as well. So the longer serving board member, serving. I just found out. I think I need to retire soon. Yeah. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're going to get uh, Give Caroline. me a plaque. We're going to get plaque. you a plaque. <laughs> But, but in general, can you just explain, because Intel do a lot of innovation yeah. in, in this space, and it's not necessarily just the, uh, the, the chipsets. It's, it's a little bit more than that as well. So do you just want to give a, a bit of a summary in terms of some of the work that you've sure. been driving forward? Yep. So we started this uh, a virtualized RAN, uh, open RAN journey. Gosh, uh, I've been in Intel almost 13 years, so a, a good 10 years journey. We, did a, we got a lot of learnings. We've, uh, you know, clearly, uh, silicon platform is very important. You need to have the right acceleration, including inline acceleration, which we are providing. Uh, but more importantly, you actually need to have a reference software. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a way to significantly accelerate the gold time to market mm -hmm. for our uh, customers who tend to um, uh, the manufacture of the equipment. We also provide a, a enabling system, meaning that, for example, we actually have a lab mm -hmm. in uh, New Mexico, U United States, allow you to remotely lock in for the, the, the telcos who wanted to debug their software, runs on a very opinionated stack, you know, the, the latest, greatest stack. And we have engineers to help uh, you to optimize this. So all of that together is meaning, what I'm trying to say is, this is not something just throw over the walls and, well, here you go, open RAN. You really have to purposefully invest 
enabled and work with the ecosystem. The lab concept, you know, that's why we're doing so much in TIP, is so important because you are running a layer one physical layer in a cloud native environment. Mm -hmm. Anytime you start running containerization and VF, there are penalties, there are overheads. The question is how do you lower the overhead and meet all the requirements that the traditional uh, uh, product meets? So that's the, that's the element. We do this and uh, we're very, very excited and happy to be invited to the GCC uh, 7. I, I was quoted in that because we do believe, like you said, we cannot have a regional flavor. Mm. Ecosystem needs to be broad and global. What we have done, what we have learned in, in TIP in the uh, United, United States, EU, in Japan, we want to, in Korea, we want to bring it into the GCC community. So thank you so much for allowing us to be part of this journey with you, and we look forward to do more. Okay, great. And can you just um, give a, a little bit of a view as to Intel taking part in this, in this lab? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting from an operator's perspective what the benefits are, but I'd like to get the view from, from a vendor taking part in driving forward on working in a, a neutral environment as well. Yeah, so in Intel, ultimately we don't deliver a commercial product, commercial system. We're relying on our customers to do that. One thing to do, two things, when we first started is to make the market. Hmm. If there's no market, nobody's gonna participate. So we call this a TEM expansion, market expansion. So we do a lot of uh, demand generation, providing reference design. Now, once the, the market is open, I think the previous pre previous panel talked about open rate is here. We are seeing Rakuten, we are seeing Dish to be launched. Verizon in the United States actually launched on uh, uh, mid-band, C-band, which is uh, the massive MIMO on Intel, on the, the, uh, the virtualized RAN environment. We, are, we just heard AT&T announce it. So it is it, a Vodafone, how can I forget? <laughs> the Vodafone, our chairman, personally announces <laughs> DT is working at Tiffany. Thank you very much, Telefonica. I, really, you look around, everybody's looking at it, but they're in different parts of the journey, right? So our contribution is because we have, we have been in this the longest. Mm. There are competitors coming up, but we have been in this longest. We're probably roughly about uh, three years ahead of the, uh, the, the pack. It is our responsibility to share our learnings. It is our responsibility to share the blueprints with the world such that if there's no adoption open and nobody's making a penny. So this is part that why we are so committed to TIP I mean, that's why I'm serving, apparently I just told, I'm <laughs> the longest serving. We contribute both in terms of uh, resources, uh, prototyping, software, and simply our brand to yeah. this. Okay, excellent. Now, Katya, I think all of this is, is making sense to you. Um, you've gone through a, a, an experience of developing a, a new lab environment yeah. in Germany and Berlin. Um, you've, you've got a part of a stand here dedicated to that as well. Um, do you just want to give an overview of that? Because I think that the model that you've created there is a really interesting one to, to describe. Yeah. Um, although, I, Salim, I'm very interesting to have a catch up with you then later because I think we can learn from each other a lot. And uh, uh, what we have done um, at Deutsche Telekom that uh, together with partners, and here we have 11 partners, so happy to see Carsten there as one of our partners. Wow, would you like to stand up and wave your hands? No. <laughs> that um, also uh, the Ministry of Digital and Transport in Germany has understood that we need a new approach. And to drive these activities, it needs you know, a, a booster, so to say. And therefore, we have applied for a project and uh, successfully so that we have been funded by this ministry and we have this 11 partners and we are really glad to have this consortium uh, uh, built right now. We are in the process of setting it up. We already had our first plug fest in November that was really at the moment when also there was this official handover uh, of this uh, document and so that we could start. And I think this is the right direction, especially in Europe as there is a lot of movement going on, but also the need to have an open lab. And openness and sharing should be really at the core of this lab. And that is important to also open 
uh, to, to, to reduce the barrier for smaller companies, also for startups, mm -hmm. so that they can do testing in an end-to-end -end environment, something they could not do otherwise. And um, I know it is not that simple, and to build that, it's a lot of effort. I would be lying if I would say everything is already in place. But we work on it, and um, the, the open run in general is a hot topic here, of course, but we also have other ideas in mind, and uh, uh, really listen to the market. And therefore, we are happy to be here at Mobile Work Congress and with a new brand, and um, yeah. Hope that I could answer oh, your question. Always, always, <laughs> but I'm going to follow up anyway. Um, so traditionally, operators have always wanted to do bilateral testing. You know, yes. I want to bring all the equipment into my lab, yeah. and I want to test it for my specific network deployment. So, how do you get around that kind of mindset? Yes. And then, what what are the benefits of of doing it within a centralized kind of facility? Yeah, that is. I mean, you mentioned that as well. It does not make sense that we have, you know, all this testing here and there and to have it built. So that would be a waste of resources also. So it needs this consolidated approach. And that is why we also team up with Vodafone and Telefonica especially. And we also can invite other operators here to join in as well. And uh, to reduce the effort for all of them for the vendors and for the operators. But of course, it is a learning curve. You know, you have to share results and that is changing a mindset. And um, yeah, but I'm very optimistic because when everyone sees this benefit, it's the way forward. I think the interesting point there, what you said was that reduce the effort from the individual right. operators. Yes. So it's not saying that it's going to re totally replace that effort. No. It is more that we come up with a, um, and you mentioned the MOU group, they have to define a reference implementation so that others can test against that. And that would give also the good feeling that we do not run into such a fragmented market yeah. one day. Mm -hmm. And that is important. And that is why we are also open to others. We are vendor agnostic. We are open to collaborate here with TIP, but also with Oran Alliance and ONF. Uh, it is really needed to go that way. Great, great. Uh, Salim, you've heard the response there as well. Do you, do you agree with those points in terms of that will still be some you know, localized testing for operator networks as well as a centralized? Of course, actually, we resonate totally with, with, with what Cathy highlighted, especially the part of open-minded mind, open and open heart, actually, in the, in the collaboration. Mm. Usually, again, as operator, we work in a very competitive environment. We don't talk to each other. It is challenging, actually, to exchange information, especially we have gone through a simple task that uh, lab where it will be hosted. It was a big fight. Then it decided, okay, we host it. Then it was internally, I had problem. Because in the PR, I have to, we have, is it hosted by do, or it is GCC, we have to give up that sort of uh, arrogance or whatever. We, it is, we, we tag it, it is GCC 7 uh, lab, simple, simple things. But we have, again, the, for, for this activity to succeed, we have to be open-minded. Uh, we have to be open for sharing information and, and collaboration. I think this is very, very key to succeed. In the, in, the, in the journey of open run the, within, within our, our region and as Cathy highlighted, even in, the, in Europe, whatever happening there. And we have to exchange. We had discussion with, with Intel as well, how we can exchange between different lab. The, we, have, we are building a lab in Europe as well. There is a lab, how we can exchange information, exchange right. experience, and, and use cases. So, so I think we are on the right track to monetize this infrastructure. Of course, there are challenges. There are challenges uh, from our mm. perspective today in, in open run that, the, 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 uh, oh, sorry, in current legacy system, it is one vendor, they are doing this, uh, the, the capabilities to build. Now, we, it, is, it is a layered approach. So to have an SI system integrated in the region who understand radio and understand uh, cloud and trans connectivity and automation, it is challenging. Mm. So we, uh, and, and one of the, our mandate actually as, a, as a op seven operators, we are, we are trying to create a local system integrator that can, can support these capabilities. Mm -hmm. to, uh, and, and support even the vendors who are at different layers for them to reach out to a system integrator in order to, again, expedite the rollout mm -hmm. of, the, of the capabilities. So, so this is, this is one, one, one area that it is a challenge and we need to work with the ecosystem to, to create a, 
require system integrators. Yeah, that's great. And you talk about sharing the lessons learned with the community. Yeah. I guess that's the local community within the region, but also within within the global community as well. And that's how you achieve scale and definitely. Okay, of great. Um, Caroline, question for you. Um, you mentioned that you also have a lab environment in where was it? Was it Austin? Uh, New Mexico. New Mexico. So yeah, we have multiple. Well, not that close, but <laughs> but we have multiple labs. But we, this one, we actually set it up in an environment that people can remote lock it. Mm. During the COVID, we realized it's rare for people to be able to come to your lab um, physically. So that uh, it, it took a lot of IT hurdles, but I understand that this is something we had to. To that. And then the, one other thing I'm just going to mention, you know, what, what Kaya said was it must be extremely uncomfortable for operators to to be in take part of this because he and I used to work in a company no longer exists called Nortel. Back then, it's very much a, you know, I work with you, but I, you know, I don't share information. But the open line is different. The Fed is open. Look, the cloud is like that. Cloud, a lot of the stuff is very open. You compete based on the application you put on top of it. But the not eighty percent of stuff needs to be as much as we can share, we can learn, accelerate the path. Like, we'll take one example. Why do we set up that lab? Intel really came from the cloud. We mm. understand, you know, that's our that's that's the nature. That's our basis. We 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 make CPU that that power the cloud. So we bring that uh, that knowledge, that know how into the lab, versus you know and you know the network much better. You know your RF environment, you know your call model, for example. So that is the contribution we come in to accelerate. Mm. Right. As, a, as a TIP board member, we, we, every, we meet every other week, we always talk about how do we accelerate adoption of a cloud native network, whether it's RAN, extend beyond RAN even. How do, you, how do you add more value to the operator world? That, that's ultimately the TIP's uh, mm. a mandate. So we, we talk a lot about it, and this, I'm really happy to, to, be, to, to hear what you're doing. That, that's just you know, amazing to be part Thank of. You. Thank you for that. Yeah, great. So I guess the question is then, um, I mean, the rubber is really hitting the road mm -hmm. with Open RAN now, and there's more focus on the test and validation aspects yep. and, uh, and not just proof of concepts. We're, we're way beyond that now. Um, we kind of started to go through a stage where you'd only see a press release every couple of weeks where somebody was opening up a new Open RAN lab mm -hmm. environment. Is there a danger that we're going to have too many labs um, and not have it centralized enough? If we're looking at our community of, of vendors that we need to support as well. Is, is there a danger that we may be asking too much for, for them, or, or how do we solve that as a, as a challenge? Catch you. Is that a question to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, I can, of course, not speak for vendors, but I mean, we conducted some interviews after this plug fest to better understand where are their pain points, what, what is their interest, their expectations. And of course, there, there's always the risk if the, it, it gets too fragmented, if there are too many players, because such a lab is not only, uh, it is resource intensive. It needs the, the investment into the environment, the technical environment, but also to maintain this environment. And also, I mean, it's not only about technology. You have to run such a lab. That means also a lot of organizational stuff. For example, that you have to maintain a website a, so that people can lock in ver uh, remotely and this and that. That shouldn't be underestimated. And at the same time, um, who is going to finance that? Yeah, hmm. so I think it should be well balanced how many labs are really needed to fulfill this task. And um, I, I believe in this cycle, okay, uh, you know, there is some coming up and there will be a point where it says, okay, who can survive in this field and what is the benefit? So, but here we should think in the full ecosystem, how we can drive the ecosystem and really accelerate the developments. But what I've heard from the vendors is that, that there is an interest to have it more consolidated because it does not make sense if they run from this operator to that operator and to do the same stuff and bring along the same equipment. Yeah? And in the end, but it is up to us to decide how to handle that in future.
I think there might be a lesson about, uh, we can learn, look at what, how the cloud guys run this, mm. right? It, a lab to, the, lab to them is really a process to CI, CD. When we were in Nortel, yeah. we used to release once a year, yeah. maybe twice a year, but this environment, when it's cloud native, it's CI, CD. So you got, you got to bring people together, you got yeah. to, to solve the issues, you, you got to continue to improve and develop. So the, I agree with you, there is a risk of true fragmentation. There's, we, got to, we got to pull our resource together. I think TIP is trying to do that, ORAN Alliance yes. Partnership is trying to do that, and, and ONF is jumping in. So we, as an as a ecosystem, we should look, evaluate. So you know, words like G5 and G, uh, GCC7, these are the right, right things to do. So I think lab is a phase of, of, of adopting the new technology like open run. So, so uh, with the time, maybe the, the lab will be dissolved because we, technology is being, being implemented. So at this stage, we are, we are all interested in verifying these capabilities, the technology, in order to understand it better. Oh. Accordingly, we release in our RFP, we include the specifications. At the moment we have vendors on board, I think then, then it will be business as usual. So it will be business as usual. We'll have our, we, we have built an ecosystem. We have partners. We'll have our, our each operator then will have their own labs to, for incremental enhancement and improvement of technology. But at this stage, it's very critical. These labs are very important to, to, to the regions and in order for us to understand and verify the technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think the regional approach and having a centralized facility within the region, whether it be in Germany or the Middle East, I think it's, it's absolutely a great way, way to go. And I think it, it goes to helping the vendors to be able to get as much visibility with you know, addressing the resource constraints mm -hmm. and also yeah. the operator's sure. resource constraints uh, as well. I think actually you made that point before as well. So I'm um, aware that we have 13, 12, 11 seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just want to thank the, the panel, but just to wrap up from my side, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to see this, this level of collaboration from the regions. And I think that the view that it's going to be fed into more of a global drive for Open RAN. So that's going to help to scale and we're going to have a single Open RAN baseline as much as possible. Um, and the, the value of, of testing in a community-based approach is, is not to be underestimated. It, it provides benefits to everybody, all the stakeholders, whether it be from the operators and the resources that they're applying to, to test and validation to, to the vendor community as, as well. We need to help to build up uh, the innovation that's that's coming on as well. So the adoption of the methodology of trying to test once and deploy many times is something that we really need to, mm. to look at in order to reduce the costs and the testing resources for both <laughs> operators and vendors. And the key at the end of this is to really build the confidence of open RAN systems and the technology which will shorten the time to market because we're doing it all together um, and enable those commercial uh, deployments to accelerate as quickly as possible. So thank you very much for thank your you. time, ladies thank and gentlemen you. of the panel. Um, so we've just seen collaboration and the whole point about collaboration, whether it's from industry bodies, whether it's from vendors, whether it's from operators, is that people want to ensure that uh, we do it once uh, we don't duplicate the efforts and, and we share the knowledge and learn. In our last section, um, we've got uh, Open RAN innovation. So what are the good next steps that can actually happen in, open, in innovating around and, and who's been driving this innovation? So I'd like to call up Eugenia Jordan from Parallel Wireless, who's going to moderate the next session. Welcome, Eugenia. Thank you very much. Let me call my panelists, Renu, Renuka, and Jillian, in any order. And you can try to match up yourself like Caroline did to her picture. <laughs> no, or don't. <laughs> you can sit in the middle, match yourself up. Thank you, everyone, so much. So, dear panelists, please briefly introduce yourself. 
how long you've been in the industry, how long you've been working on Open WAN, what you do in your spare time. <laughs> yeah, so I start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go. So, uh, yeah, I'm Renu Gupta, and I run tel Rencom Teleservices based in India and US. And we are um, fast expanding into a uh, different part of uh, the world, and depending on the 5G, Open LAN, and other opportunities. So we have been engaged in wireless services and uh, uh, field rollouts for a while now. And uh, we are fortunate that uh, we are engaged in open RAN uh, trials and POCs uh, from uh, its early days. So the trials have led to limited deployments in uh, uh, densely populated areas and the sparsely populated areas. And uh, open RAN has made tremendous stride in terms of uh, uh, stability, uh, resilience, and performance. The solution has been found uh, stable, and uh, performance has been equivalent to legacy providers, um, or in some cases even better, as can be seen from the KPIs uh, obtained from the field. And uh, the features like uh, automatic DU start and CU sparing, they allow further resilience in times of failure. So open hand is a, uh, basically a disaggregated uh, uh, software which distributes the features between different nodes. So uh, lesser equipments are required at site. So uh, the, uh, intuitively, the capex and opex uh, should be lower due to competition fostered by the uh, number of uh, more vendors joining in the open hand ecosystem and also due to the lesser equipment at site. So um, CapEx and OpEx is uh, uh, going to uh, be, I mean, driving down up to 40 and 30% respectively. And total cost of ownership has been validated by a study done by uh, consulting company, Senza Pili and uh, Rakuta Networks. This is the public information available for anyone, and it uh, uh, shows the methodology and the uh, numbers. So the case for com uh, open LAN is uh, compelling. And we are also seeing an uptake in operators uh, pushing for open LAN uh, by opening up two to three, three to 5% of their network in 2022 and uh, increasing up to 20, I mean 10% uh, by 2023. So future of open LAN is bright. Is open. <laughs> <laughs> open. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vinoka. Yeah, so Renuka, part of Meta Connectivity team, and glad to be here. I know we are sitting between you and you and your break for the day, so we'll we'll see that we can kind of help wrap up and summarize the messages from this session. So I'm part of Connectivity team. We are focused on driving innovation in telecom. Work closely with the partners. We saw all the partners pretty much today and more, and our aim or mission is to bring affordable, high quality, and abundant connectivity to all the people. And that, we will talk more about it, but that has been at the heart of what we do through a project called Telecom Infra Project. We heard about that as well. And then other missions and programs that the connectivity team drives. And for me, I come from a telecom background all along, have started my career with the very first, I would say, mobile network that was being deployed back in India that time, and uh, so the journey through 2G2 all the way up to today, and very excited that that journey has translated into the innovation and the disaggregation related uh, parts that we are working on. And last but not least, Jillian. My name is Jillian Kaplan, and um, I have been in the telecommunications industry for 18 years, which feels crazy to say. Um, I started at Verizon in central office engineering when we were making the transition from copper to fiber, and I'm extremely passionate about innovation. Um, it feels very exciting to be a part of all the innovation happening today, and what feels like with, with Open RAN, with the transition from 4G to 5G, just a really, really exciting time to be part of the industry. I have been at Dell Technologies a little over three years now in the telecom systems business unit, really focused on 5G and telecom thought leadership talking about our new innovations in various areas of the telecom systems business. So I'm really excited to be with you all this afternoon. And you're also a tower climber. 
right? When yeah, yes. yeah. I, I learned how to uh, <laughs> climb phone poles and fix fiber lines um, in my spare time when I <laughs> was at Verizon. That is true. That is true. And now you're working on open RAN. So yeah, exactly. Let me ask our esteemed panelists the question: What is just one? I know it's very hard to pick one, but what is just one innovation in open RAN? that you're working on excites you the most? And we'll start with Jillian. We'll go the opposite way. So I don't really think it's an innovation, like, like a thing. I really think it's about choice. When I, when I talk to customers, it's really about having choice and having the ability to make a choice that they didn't necessarily have before, especially when we talk about new use cases coming to market and being able to make the right choice for those specific use cases. So that's what I think is most exciting and most compelling about Open RAN. Is the choice. The choice. The, the choice. choice. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to add to that, that definitely is the key for Open RAN. In terms of innovation, I would say what we are seeing with AI ML based applications, who knew that we can now implement with the algorithms the optimization that the network needs or the, the resource optimization or resource um, management that we can do through the different X apps and so on. So I'm personally excited about that part of Open RAN. So once we get the basics done, this is where it is going to lead to the next generation of RAN. Absolutely. And yeah, so for me, I mean, there are products, there are solutions. For me, it is ease of integration. Mm -hmm. So integration uh, has, is basically the, has the two key areas, the software integration, like the radios to DU and DU to CU, and the uh, field integration. So I'll address both. Uh, software integration, um, see, operators have always uh, been buying the entire solution from the uh, legacy uh, providers. And uh, historically, telecom has always worked like that. So any change, it takes time to take effect. So software solution, the solution to this has been that there is a software solution owner, like I can name Mavenir or Parallel Wireless, owning this integration piece. And uh, they, uh, this software solution owner would uh, get all the hardware, firmware from the uh, different vendors and would load the software component into it and test it end to end. Once this end-to-end -end testing is done and validated, this software piece is, this solution is it, uh, released to the uh, field. So uh, in future, operators might decide to uh, you know, own this integration piece themselves. They might uh, you know, get it done by some uh, system integrator to do end-to-end -end, uh, integration in their own labs. And uh, in fact, potentially, they might uh, um, you know, uh, have their own custom um, innovations to you know for their solution to meet specific subscribers needs so in future operators are going to own this ecosystem and the solution end to end and the second is the field integration the field integration now one, this one, one, one. this is the second, <laughs> uh, this is the second one uh, so field no uh, no 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 no, no. Uh, this is one only but integration has two piece so software integration and field so field i'm saying that field, then this solution is uh, deployed in the field and integrated. And uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, the deployment uh, is like a with zero touch provisioning mm -hmm. like features, you know, deployment is like breeze and radio can come up in five to nine minutes. And once the DU, uh, CU talks to the DU, the, uh, you know, the, there's, there are no field visits required. So uh, it has uh, simplified the um, uh, total deployment process and the operations and maintenance are also simplified further. So I'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're talking about, what excites you the most is the ease of integration. Yes, yes. Across all stacks, mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. all the components. Mm -hmm. It excites you guys too, right? So my next question so you talked about your personal stuff, you talked about what excites you about Open RAN. Now, let's talk about the organizations that you represent here. What innovation your organizations are driving? And we'll start with you, Renuka. Mm -hmm. 
So, we know. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm changing the order on the fly. So <laughs> that's why I'm looking and reading, and I'm. So you so, want me to start? Yes. Okay. Please. Yeah. So um, three innovations I would uh, push for. Uh, you know, the simplified, simplifications of deployment. So this might mean uh, different things to different people, but at the end of the day, what it really means is that the radio can be turned up in um, as less time as uh, possible and be functional. And with all its right parameters and also, uh, you know, uh, reducing the potential human errors. So uh, this is one. And uh, then uh, it has to be, uh, the parameters have to be correct from the uh, site and the cluster uh, perspective. So this leads to the second one, which is a self-healing and self-optimizing network. Mm -hmm. So self-healing that the network corrects its uh, performance and its faults. And the self-optimization means that the site can be optimized automatically without any human intervention. And say, let's consider a site is to be added uh, um, uh, at a location which is 100 miles from the data center. So the, when the site is to be turned up, instead of adding the site and sending someone to optimize, um, the site, uh, um, we can have it self-optimized. And um, then uh, there is a CI-CD model, you know, having the CI-CD model introduced into telecom sector will migrate the um, testing, integration, uh, software release, and the total uh, software deployment uh, from the manual, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the manual to the uh, automated and also the remote deployment. So, at, because manual on-site uh, um, upgrades are, you know, subjected to mistakes and uh, maintenance window is short. So with the, this automation, the mistakes are eliminated and the, um, the time window gets expanded. And yeah, especially it became very prominent during COVID, right. Right, when it was challenging to send people yes. on, on, on site. Yeah. yeah, great innovations that your company is working on. So I know, Julian, I'm sorry I missed your notes because I was supposed to start with you. So we'll go this way. We're good, we're good. <laughs> okay. So Renuka, how about Meta? What are you guys innovating? What are you doing on Open RAN? So Meta and Open RAN. So we have a strong desire, again, to bring the Open RAN concept of disaggregation, open interface-based solutions to the market and and in that process or journey there are three simple steps that we are trying to channel and that is on the open platform of telecom infra project as well as with the many connectivity initiatives that meta is driving as well for the connectivity infrastructure so the first and foremost is to gather and harmonize the requirements from all of the operators. We heard from many of them today mm -hmm. that their challenge is to find all of that detailed technical requirement uh, set and give it to all the vendor partners and find the readiness out there. So on our platform, we are basically harmonizing those requirements in one place so that you see the whole demand side of it, the prioritization from them, and see how the vendor partners can drive and map and adjust their roadmaps to those technical priorities. And in the second part of it, we are basically publishing or anchoring what we call an open RAN roadmap on the platform. And that, again, is about connecting the demand with the supply side. So the roadmap shows you what the prioritization is and how can we pace the requirements set in a way that the vendor partner solutions can supply what is needed today at the same time can continue to innovate for the next step of it. So that's the step number two. And in step number three, it's all about execution, driving test and validation on a common platform. Again, we heard um, many of them talking about it today. So instead of having one-on-one -on -one integration of each of the operator's requirements in each of their labs, the TIP platform or the meta connectivity labs are driving a common mission of uh, general 80% of those requirements being tested in a collaborative manner based on the roadmap that is anchored. And then you provide that readiness as a two-way benefit to both the MNOs and the vendors. So those are the three steps. And again, each step involves its own complexity. 
and but we are getting there like we again i'm, I'm going to summarize from what yago said to all the way up to katya that yes we want the solutions it is being deployed today and so this is the way to build those solutions in a collaborative platform exciting world we live in yes so what are innovations happening at dell jillian so we play an active role in TIP and, and O-RAN Alliance, and we have many of our servers are certified and on the platforms, which is really exciting. And last year, I'm losing track of my years now, uh, <laughs> we um, opened our Open Telecom Ecosystem Lab, which will open physically later this year in Round Rock, Texas, but it's currently open virtually right now, and it is a lab where we can test um, any stack that is needed for um, all layers of the stack and be able to help um, telecommunication service providers as well as partners test combinations together, right? And, and share that information so we figure out what works and what doesn't work. And this is really all about partnerships. And I think it's really important that companies that are as large as Dell, because we're massive, right? That we, that we do this kind of testing and that we share this information and that we're truly open in what, what we do. Um, and we had some pretty big announcements last week and one of them um, was our solution integration platform within TIP. Um, I'm sorry, within TIP, within um, OTEL, which is our open telecom ecosystem lab. Um, that, that leverages the latest uh, DevOps techniques and accelerates um, automated automating CI, um, uh, C, CI, CD pipeline to monitor and automate how these solutions are testing. So it's pretty exciting and we're hoping, you know, for this big launch later in the year of our, our, physical, our physical site in Round Rock. And then lastly, um, also last week, we launched a physical accelerator card as well um, as part of our um, open RAN solution. So if you want to come down to our booth and see the physical card, that's a pretty exciting piece of hardware um, that is part of our announcements as well. So between kind of our open platforms and making sure that we're integrating these solutions and being a part of TIP and the, the O-RAN Alliance, as well as um, you know keeping our innovations up in our hardware, we're really trying to make sure that end to end we are offering everything we can and, and being good partners to everyone. To all of us, yep, yeah. yep. So now, I'm gonna ask a very difficult question. So, you all, your companies, and you all been working on innovating, it's been really hard. So, what are the lessons that you've learned from the field? What are the wounds that you're leaking, or what are the successes? So we'll start with Renuka because you guys are doing a lot of deployments and labs across the globe for many, many years. So what are the key lessons? Yeah, and I'll start with the statement that Open RAN is a journey, and we all kind of agree to it pretty much. So in that journey, the first step was to trial the technology and see how it matches with what was the expectation. And so many different trials and deployments. The first learning was that we have to share the learnings back to the community because that's how that iterative process kind of builds the success story for the next operator on. And the good example or the great example of it was that today we saw and heard about the OMG or the G5 uh, MNOs bringing their requirements and starting their deployment. So Vodafone, Telefonica, DT, all of them have their own um, deployments and trials being done. The learnings from that are being so useful that the next set of MNOs, and we saw an example again today with the GC7, they, the operators in Middle East, so they, they are kind of following that same uh, footsteps and the learnings and playbooks from the initial trials are very essential for them. That's, that's one. And then the second part was Open RAN, it's, um, because it is a network rollout, you have to think differently from what, uh, what the deployment use case is. We saw two different types of deployments evol evolving sort of. So one was brownfield, 
and one example was green peel. The two do not start on the same set of steps, and we have to be careful on how we plan the rollouts for each one of them, tailored to the way it is expected. The brown peel definitely needs an angle of keeping the legacy support intact, while the green field is looking forward, doesn't have to support the 2G, 3G, and, and, and so the, the challenges are different, and we, we cannot kind of blanket it with one simple use case. So those two for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of learning, we have to continue to innovate. And so the idea initially was that, okay, we are disaggregating the hardware and software. But as part of it, there is so much of uh, need on the infrastructure to continue to give better performance. And what that means is you don't stop at what you have available today. And so that's where some of that RIC implementation comes in. That's where there has to be a lot of emphasis on bringing in new SOC solutions or continue to see how we can get more from that hardware and software. So, so put a roadmap on that. So that, that would, I, I would say, is the third one. That is a very nice segue to our system integrator. Yeah, yeah so uh, I would say that uh, we have uh, been opportunate to, you know, uh, that we have been working on open NPOCs and uh, lab and field trials for a while now, uh, since the early days. And we have done all these trials in multiple countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Saudi, Brazil, India, etc. So all this exposure, uh, you know, enable us to give inputs and uh, our learnings to the open end vendors uh, for what works, what does not work, and what needs improvement. So here, uh, 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 once again, my uh, key was would be that uh, the simpler and faster deployments and the simplified operation and maintenance are the key to success of the open RAN in building sustainable models. So faster deployment, the sites can be turned out very quickly, and the operators, uh, um, you know, can do more just-in-time planning and getting the, uh, um, you know, network coverage and capacities um, issues addressed uh, while the sites are rolled out quickly. And uh, um, operations and maintenance are simplified, so uh, uh, that is, uh, you know. Um, um, it means uh, it's not just uh, important to have the uh, site deployed. We have to make sure that all its parameters are working fine and they are tuned for the optimal performance. And we also learned that uh, the CU, um, uh, CU uh, scaling uh, and CU sparing. So uh, CU scaling, um, uh, you know, uh, helps to the uh, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, future-proof the network by allowing in planning ahead for the potential, you know, network expansions. And uh, uh, once, uh, I mean, a CU is mapped to multiple DUs, then the operator is, uh, um, has the choice to uh, leave some capacity on the CU unused to, for the future turn-off of sites. And few, uh, these, uh, um, few, uh, these uh, CU um, sparing techniques means uh, by planning, I spare CU. It can be like n is to one, where n is the working CU and one is the uh, standby CU. And that is a very nice segue, talking about CUs and DUs to hardware. <laughs> so mine are both focused on partnerships, and I think our two biggest le lessons are really on partnerships in the first, that's what we're talking about, right? Partner, uh, well, lessons, lessons learned. Lessons, okay, yes. yeah. So, so I would say the, the first thing is that, for us, that we've learned is that customers need to be treated as partners and not as customers when it comes to working with um, telecommunication service providers, right? And it's very important that we realize that as use cases move from like, you know, you and I and our cell phones, we all wanted the same things. We wanted you know, fast, reliable phone service. But use cases are moving to the enterprise, right? And, and not all enterprises want the same thing. There, there, are different, um, there are different segments, they want different outcomes, et cetera. And so we have to create unique um, networks for, to, to provide these services to these enterprises via telecommunication service providers, right? And so we have to work with our customers as partners to create these unique solutions. 
And I think it's really important that we do that and that we treat them as partners. And that's something that we focused on at Dell Technologies and, and working to not just sell out of the box solutions and working, working with them truly as partners. And the second thing is to treat partners as partners, right? And that goes back to the last question on our open telecom ecosystem lab um, and, and welcoming customers and partners, both as partners, into the lab because it truly takes a village and we've got to all work together to make open RAN happen. So our biggest lessons are both around partnerships in the traditional partner sense Right, as well as customers becoming partners, even though they're technically still customers. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> so we only have a few minutes left. So I'm gonna ask you ladies last question. What is one, just one innovation that you think, so, Pull out your crystal ball and look into it and tell the audience what will be one innovation that will dominate open RAN market in 2022. So, Renuka, what do you think? I'm going to say I'm looking forward to this year being the scale year for open RAN and not necessarily innovation, but it translating into a scaled deployment. And we, again, we heard it today. Many of them are saying we are starting now. The pilots are happening now. We are deploying now. So this year will be when we basically come into the field and get to the scaled and productization mode. That is, sounds really good. And probably this is where AI and ML will help. Mm -hmm for that continuous improvement of the network. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, Renu? Yeah, so, I would say automation. Yeah. The, 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 the uh, coming phase of open end is uh, um, going to uh, a move into the a fully automated RAN world. So uh, clear automation strategies, defined processes across CICD, AIML, ZTP, and the analytics will move the will help the operators to move into a fully automated RAN world. Now, uh, the uh, scope of work is simplified as compared to the RAN uh, legacy RAN providers, and uh, uh, the more number of uh, the another difference is the more number of vendors are joining in the eco, uh, open RAN ecosystems. So now, with automation of configuration with ZTP, automation of continuous integration with CI/CD, AI, ML, it is going to help. Uh, uh, the um, operator to realize the promise of open RAN uh, to avoid vendor lock-in and increasing the efficiency, better resource utilization, and also uh, driving down the total cost of ownership. Awesome. So it's two for automation, one for scale. So, Jillian, what is your prediction for 2022 for open RAN? So scale, automation, and a dependable ecosystem. That's, that's, I think, the third pillar, key. I don't know what I would say, but if you can put those things together, mm -hmm. I think you've got a pretty solid backbone. So let's pull the audience. Who thinks that the <laughs> main trend will be scaling open RAN? Just raise your hand, okay? Who thinks that the main trend for 2022 for open RAN will be automation? Okay, about the same. And I said ecosystem, and like a ecosystem. solid ecosystem. March, okay. <laughs> and on that note, thank you very much for staying with us on your Wednesday evening. So now there's nothing stands between you and the tapas. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming and listening to our amazing panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, just before you all leave, just one little thing I would like to say, and that is a special thank to our sponsors, Radsys and Cumber Telecom. Thank you very much, everyone. All the best. See you next year here in Barcelona, 2023.